Okay, so uh, welcome to Tell for Muse again, and uh, I'm just going to uh, begin with a word of prayer before I begin my study. <laughs> Dear loving Heavenly Father, we give thanks that we can meet together to study your word and to have these presentations. And uh, we know we're near the end of the world and we've seen an increase of light. And Father, we pray to be representing you in all that we do and say and to share those, share the light that you're giving us with others. May we do it in a way which is clear and that uh, you work in the hearts of those who are listening that they can understand and be blessed and uh, comprehending this, this year message that we're now giving. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. <clears throat> so the name of my uh, presentation is, uh, this is the whole theme of the, the presentations that I will be doing. It's called A Bible-Based Chronological Study with a focus on the book of Judges. Um, this, the book of Judges was, is something that uh, Theodore uh, wanted me to share on. And um, this here, lesson here, the first maybe two or three uh, presentations, I want to just sort of have a general application to chronology. And this here particular uh, presentation, I'm, I'm calling Approaching the Chronology of chronologies, okay. <clears throat> so I'm just going to explain that title and then we'll have a brief account of the history of biblical chronology um, and then the chronology that God has enabled this movement uh, to develop uh, will be something I'll be dealing with and then I want to focus on that which I've been asked to present, namely the, the chronology of the book of Judges. So I'm just going to explain the title <clears throat> with the chronology of chronologies, um, I just had the idea just in the past week. Um, this, this is where God is leading us. When we look at the, the tabernacle, we had the outer court and then the holy place and then the holies of holies. <clears throat> and uh, if you look at the screen there, you see the, the sin uh, aspect of would be representing the earth in the outer court and then in 31 AD you, we have Christ ascend to the heavenly sanctuary and to the holy place and then in 1844 he's going to move into the, the holies of holies until the close of probation. Uh, James Usher I'm going to sort of suggest that he represents the outer court, William Miller, the holy place and this here movement being the holies of holies and the understanding of chronology that God has given us. <clears throat> so Usher, he was, um, he understood 65 years, I believe God led him to this, uh, the 65 years that we find in Isaiah chapter um, 7 verse 8, I believe. And that was from the year 742 BC uh, to 677 BC and to us in 2005 we came to understand this here as the prophetic mirror that you had 19 years before the fall of Samaria or sorry the, um, the capture of Hosea and then it was 25, 20 years then after to 1798 that was the higher medicine understanding and then uh, from 677, William Miller uh, calculated 25, 20 years to uh, saying initially uh, 1843, but we understand that's 1844. And then 19 years after that, we have, it takes us to 1863, and then the two 2520s are uh, kind of set aside, neglected, and uh, rejected certainly by uh, Uriah Smith. So just to the board there, I'm just thinking with these 65 years, Usher's fine, we find them connected with the dimensions of the outer court. Uh, with the outer court, 
That's not. Uh, yeah, throw that one out. Throw it out. <coughs> switch it myself, but I have to switch it, because you're still sharing this. Oh. And not share? What does that say? So you have to ask Stephen to stop sharing. Okay, what I can do is I can just, yeah. Okay. Can you stop sharing, Stephen? I can, yeah. I can, I can stop the share, I guess. How do I do that? Yeah, you just go uh, stop share. In your sharing function. I just press stop share maybe if I Yeah, if you do that that's easier. Okay. <laughs> okay, so um so we have with Usher, he he gives us the date seven forty two BC and this is the first year of Ahaz and he also gives us the year six seventy seven and there's gonna be twenty five twenty years until 1844 and within this year 65 years there was to be the two kings it mentions in, in, in Isaiah chapter 7 verse 16 it says the land will be for second of both their kings so the, the first king there would be Hosea and he's taken captive by Assyria in 723 and you have then 2520 years to 1798 now associating this with the outer court which I'm connecting with Usher uh, the outer court had was a hundred cubits uh, in length so Bit longer than this year, and then 50 cubits uh, going that way in breadth. And I had an opening there for the gate. And if you take an 18 inch uh, cubit, so this would be 1800 inches. This here would be also 1800 inches. This here would be 900. And now we have uh, 360 would be the width of the gate so um, I don't know 360 inches is how many cubits? Well, uh, 20. 20 cubits, yeah. And if you take away 360 from um, 900, so that would be 540. 540 in total. And then half that would be for this and that. So that's what? 270. 270. So, if you were, so the, if you add up the whole thing, um, 40 plus the 360 but if you just divide this by half so each side would be 25 20 on each side so that would be the outer court of the tabernacle so I'm trying to just uh, that just came to my mind as a potential application for Usher representing uh, the outer court even though he didn't uh, specifically mention 723 uh, he just mentions the, the fall of Samaria in 721. Okay, can we uh, can we share again?
So uh, Usher. Okay. So there, um, Usher. Oh, sorry. He well, he calculated the the, the flood. Uh, 1656 years. There was probably others who had done that calculation prior to him. Um, but the flood it was seven days. Uh, occurred seven days after the, the door was shut, and then it was five years after the death of Lamech. And it occurred on the second month, on the 17th day of the month. Now James Usher he died in the year 1656. So we have a date correlating with that span of years. He, have, he was age 75. So if you combine them seven days and then five years, you have that 75. You can maybe get from that. But he was 75 years, two months and 17 days old. So to me, that's uh, connecting as a, like a divine connection with uh, ushers, with usher, with chronology specifically here with the flood. He died on March 21st. Now, that was the date William Miller had initially set for the, the, the coming of Christ. Uh, for, so he had 20, between the 21st of March, 1843, and the 21st of March, 1844. He said sometime around that there that Christ will come. And that's 187 years after Usher died. So I just thought that was kind of an interesting uh, connection there, the number 187. Um, to Miller, he was, I'm going to sort of connect him uh, to the, the holy place. He, um, in a sense, with his chronology, was leading people to enter into the, the most holy place with Christ, but he was, in a sense, um, prior to that, he would be in the, the holy place in the chronology form. Um, the thing in there also is we have a period of 46 years from 1798 to 1844, and we normally connect that to the time period of the first and second angel's messages, which uh, Miller Certainly, Miller was involved in uh, preaching the first angel's message. And there was, in the tabernacle, uh, 46 boards. We read that in Exodus chapter 26, verses 15 to 23. Um, and they were like one and a half cubits in width. So you had 20 boards in the north, 20 boards in the south, and to the west, you had uh, six boards. And then there was two corner boards. Um, now, that also includes uh, the holies of holies as well as the holy, holy place. But uh, you have also, maybe a, Jeff Pepperger, he made a connection with the, the Zechariah, chapter 4, verses 1 to 5. We, ha we have there the candlestick being mentioned. And the candlestick was in uh, the holy place. And there we have Zechariah being woken up out of his sleep. So in the history of the Millerites, we had the, the sleeping virgins. And Zachariah is showing this here candlestick, and he doesn't know what it is. And then the Millerites, they didn't know that the earth was uh, the sanctuary. They didn't really understand the sanctuary message there either. Uh, so Jeff had a connection then to uh, the Zachariah and the sanctuary. So that's just an idea that I've had and then I mentioned there, his chronology significantly leads God's people uh, towards the Holy of Holies, which uh, we now we know, understand occurs uh, after 1844. So we move on just to like a brief history of chronology. Uh, there's um, the Book of Jubilees. Um, is recountings is a book, is apocryphal, but it has this here idea that uh, a period of jubilees occurred from the creation to the time just before they entered into the land of Canaan. They calculate 50 jubilees, less 
40 years still spent wandering in the desert before they entered into Canaan. So there's a period there of 2,410 years. This is, uh, I just found this in Wikipedia. I looked at other um, sort of people's accounts of Book of Jubilees maybe giving different years. I'm not too sure of how accurate that Wikipedia is. There's some there various views. There was a, a historian, a chronologist by the name of Sextus Julius Africanus. He wrote a history of the world in five volumes. And he lived around, six, around 160 uh, AD, so the early church fathers type period. So his, his work covers from the period of creation to the year AD 221. And uh, he calculated the period between creation and Jesus' 5,500 years, uh, placing the incarnation on the first day of AM as Anno Mundi, 5,501, or our modern calendar, March 25th, 1 BC. So this dating is the origin of the tradition that the birth of Jesus occurred on the 25th of December, nine months after the incarnation. So he would have had his years, uh, 6,000 years of Earth's history, uh, occurring around the year uh, 500 AD. And Eusebius, uh, he was uh, influenced by uh, Sextus Africanus. And uh, he attempted to place uh, the Christ, his birth in AM 5199. So that would have had the 6,000 years end around 800 AD, so a bit later than Africanus. But you had there uh, Charlemagne being uh, anointed, in a sense, by, well, you had the, the, the Pope, I think he was maybe baptized as well, or was that... Uh, there was something with Charlemagne then, anyway, at that time. Anyway, some people thought maybe that could have been the, uh, the date of the end of the 6,000 years and the second coming of Christ as well. But then you had Bede. He made a calculation at the end of the age of the world since creation. Um, he, he dated creation at 3952 BC. And then Usher, um, he calculated at 4004 BC. BC. And then he had the birth of Christ in 4 BC. So that was 4 BC was another uh, influential uh, date uh, for, that we use today for the birth of Christ. And um, you had there, therefore, 4,000 years for until that their time. And then you could have 2,000 years afterwards. So 2,000 years would take you to 1997. But we still were beyond now that 6,000 years if we were going to go by Usher's calculations. Uh, he also calculated that the, uh, the 350 years, or I should, should, should say there, <coughs> sorry, 390, um, and, the, and the 40 years of Ezekiel 4, verses 4 to 6, applied to the fulfillment of prophecy uh, relating to Josiah. Now, his chronology wasn't correct. But uh, he still had that idea that what occurred there when the kingdom was divided um, in the time of Jeroboam, that, that there was a prophecy then given of Josiah concerning him that would be fulfilled 350 years later. But there was some things that needed to be corrected with that chronology. Uh, he, we have there the 721 BC date he's given us as well for the fall of Samaria. And then when it came to Miller, there was like an explosion of chronological um, information. Uh, he understood that uh, the decree of Artaxerxes went in, in 457 BC. Usher had it later than that. I think he had it at 460, 467, was it? Yeah. And then... Um, so he corrected, Muller corrected that. And then he, we have the 2520 there, he understood that. It was the 2450 years or a cycle of jubilees, uh, 50 jubilees. That's 50 times uh, 49 years from 607. That's the beginning 
of the 70 week prophecy until 1843. Uh, there was the understanding of the 1335 uh, that we find in Daniel chapter uh, 12, verse 12, I think. And, and that, uh, that takes us to 1843. And then in 1290, the previous verse before that takes us to, to 1798, both beginning in 508. And then the 1260, there may have been others who had understood that uh, prior to Miller, but he certainly uh, emphasized that. And Lich also uh, calculated the, the prophecies that we find in Revelation chapter 9. There's a period of five months, which is he applied to 150 years and then a period of 391 years and 15 months that we find in Revelation 9 verse 15 talks about an hour, a day, a month and a year and he calculated that from 1449 to 1840 and that chronology provided an emphasis uh, to Millerite's uh, preaching so uh, did Lich come up with them dates or was that previously? Alexander Keith had um Sort of given the basis here. So Alexander Keith had sort of given the basis for understanding it, but Lich is the one who who nailed it down in this specific chronology. Mm -hmm. So um, so there were other people uh, doing doing similar things, mm -hmm. but his chronology was a bit more specific. And of course, we know later was witnessed to by the biblical calendar. Yes, okay, thank you. So after 1844, we had Hiram Medson, uh, his chronology studies uh, relating to the 2520. And then we had, in the lifetime of Ellen White's prophetic ministry, we had, we've had a lot of her uh, chronological statements as well. But... Um, this is one example. So she says, Solomon, at the age of 18 years, commenced his reign upon the throne of his father David. So the Bible doesn't give us what age Solomon ascended to the throne. But with that, we can see that uh, if we go to the beginning of the, the diagram there, Solomon's 18, and David, he's aged 70. And he had reigned 40 years and he was king in Hebron when he became 30. So you have there 18 and 70 as a symbol. And from that there time period, it's going to be 11 years before the temple's completed. And then it's going to be 17 years till when Solomon's house is going to be completed. And if you multiply 11 by 17, we have the number 187, which connects to combination of Solomon's age and David's age uh, just uh, you have the numbers by, in, by the power of ten so we have our first Kings chapter 6 says in the 11th year was the house finished so was he seven years in the building of it but Solomon was building his own house 13 years and he finished his house all his house so you just add the uh, they both or date it from the fourth year of Solomon, so you add them 13 years, that gives you 17. But in 1863, we had a rejection of the 2520, and we had Edwin Thiel's chronology of the kings as well, so there was like a dege degeneration to some level of the understanding of chronology after 1863. Uh, an acceptance of Thiel's chronology, so he's an Adventist, um, kind of chronologist. He's uh, very a seriologist, actually. Okay, a seriologist, and he's studied, studied at the University of Chicago at the uh, the Assyrian school there. Okay. Yes, I'm not too sure if people can. No, they couldn't hear that. <laughs> yeah. So with uh, Edwin Thiel, he was an Assyriologist. He studied at the University of Chicago, at this Assyrian school. And he had some theories about Assyrian history that he tried to use to prove the Bible, but rejected much of the Bible chronology to do so. Okay, so an acceptance of Thiel's chronology 
would do ill to a coherent understanding of the Bible. So I'm going to show you a diagram which presents the structure relating to the consequence of the land resting every seventh year as commanded in Leviticus chapter 25 verses 2 to 4 that resulted in the 70 year Babylonian captivity for Judah. A span of 490 years prior to the captivity takes us to the anointing of King Saul. Before his anointing, Samuel was told to relate to the children of Israel the heavy burdens that would result in their clamour for a king. Such provides a reason as to why the land did not rest thereafter for 490 years, which required 70 years accumulated years to rectify. Which required 70 accumulated years to rectify. So I have a diagram there. So this would be like the correct, uh, correct understanding. We have there Leviticus chapters chapter 25 verses 2 to 4 says when you come into the land which I give you then shall you then shall the land keep a sabbath unto the Lord six years shall thy sow thy field and six years shall thy prune thy vineyard and gather the fruit thereof but in the seventh year shall be a sabbath of rest unto the land a sabbath for the Lord thou shall neither sow thy field nor prune thy vineyard so they were half the land was to have a rest every seventh year. And then in 2 Chronicles, chapter 36, it says, And them that had escaped from the sword carried he away to Babylon. So this is Nebuchadnezzar. When they were servants to him and his sons until the reign of the kingdom of Persia, to fulfill the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah, until the land had enjoyed her Sabbaths, for as long as she lay desolate, she kept Sabbath to fulfill three score and ten years. So we see that there, this here 70 year period of captivity, uh, the land resting is based upon the neglect of to fulfill that sabbatical cycle every seven years prior to that. And so if you count back from when the Babylonian captivity began in 607, it takes you to when uh, Saul was anointed king in 1097 BC. We'll get more into the, the detail of that later on. And then we have there what occurred uh, when so just after Saul, or just before Saul was anointed. Um, it says, And Samuel told all the words of the Lord unto the people, and that had asked him of a king. And he said, This shall be the manner of the king that shall reign over you. He shall take your sons and your daughters, and appoint them for himself, and appoint them for captains, and he set and will set them to ear, set them to ear his ground and to reap his harvest. And he will take of your fields and your vineyards and your olives, all the yards, even the best of them, and give them to his servants. And he will take the tenth of your seed and of your vineyards and give them to his officers and to his servants. So there you have a justification, in a sense, maybe. Um, wasn't really justified, but in a sense an excuse for them to not keep the rest of the land. But if you're going by Thiel's chronology, if you go back from 607 BC, um, we have, that would take you some time, uh, maybe when Samuel was judging, it wouldn't be in the time period when Saul was anointed, it would be maybe about 46 years after Saul was anointed. So using the information in Kings and Chronicles, Edwin Thiel has calculated the date for the division of the kingdom to being uh, 931 to 930 BC. So the 490 years of the land resting wouldn't have any significance. And when we go to Ezekiel's prophecy that we find in chapter 4, verses uh, 4 to 6, he's, his focus is on the siege and He's applying 390 years prior to that, and he's going back 40 years prior to that. But if you go back 390 years, that would take you to the time when the kingdom is divided. And if you're going to go by Thiel's chronology, it would take you some time to when David was ruling, 34 years. And it wouldn't provide any sort of meaningful application of that prophecy. And so Thiel's chronology could be like... Uh, I would describe it as like vandalism, in the sense to uh, 
his understanding would, if you were going to accept that, would vandalize uh, true biblical prophecy. And so we come to this movement. We've had this here period, in a sense, apart from Ellen White's statements, there hasn't been much, um, much advancement in chron chronological understanding. But then in 2005, we had the, the prophetic mirror of the 22520s. We had the 46 years understanding of representing a temple. So from 1798 to 1844, uh, that was the period of the first and second angel's messages. And we find that written in John chapter 2, verses 18 to 21, where the, the disciples come, sorry, the Pharisees come to Christ and they say, you know, 46 years is this temple and has been in building and will you raise it up in three days? So you have the number 46 is a symbol uh, being introduced to the movement. We calculate 126 years from when the 2520s were rejected in 1863 to 1989 and that connects us uh, to the fulfillment of the latter part of Daniel 11 verse 40. And then from 1888 we can also calculate another 126 years uh, to 2014. And I really think the chronology of this movement has really expanded a great amount from that dear time. We've had the 70 weeks understanding connected to the two Lamics. And so I'm just sort of mentioning these, not going into detail, um, hoping you'll maybe have some understanding of them. But this is some of the things that has been brought to light um, to the movement. We have an understanding of the four seven times of Leviticus chapter 26, that these apply to 70 year periods or a multiple of them. So um, for instance, uh, from the time period of Manasseh's captivity, it was 70 years to when the 70 years of Babylonian captivity began, began and Daniel was taken captive. We have an understanding of the chronology of the 390 and 40 years of Ezekiel 4. Uh, we have a dates uh, connected to 457 BC to 1844. Uh, so that's what sort of Dwight dwelled upon. We've, we've seen there the first day of the first month can connect to the first day of the first month and the first disappointment in 1844. And to the midnight cry was given to, was connects to when uh, uh, so to when uh, Ezra arrived in, in Jerusalem and that connects them to uh, Samuel Snow's uh, message in Exeter and then we have Ezekiel's dates connected to Millerite history so Ezekiel has four dates that uh, connect or that mention or sort of can be related to the first day of the first month the fifth day of the fourth month the first day of the fifth month and the tenth day of the seventh month so there's a lot of significance with Ezekiel and Millerite history. Um, we've seen that Joseph and Christ to 1798, chronological parallel. So Joseph was 30 when he uh, was made second com in command. Christ was 30 when he was baptized and had um, uh, two and a half, three and a half years of ministry. But that there was part of a seven year period of the last week of Christ where after which the Stephen was stoned and then you, you have like uh, two, two times 252 years and then five times 252 years which uh, parallel the time period of the famine. So that week of Christ would parallel the years of plenty. And then we have the pattern of Christ understanding that this is copied by the Antichrist. So Christ has 30 years preparation. Antichrist is 30 years preparation also from 508 to 538. Uh, there's a 1260 years of ministry of Christ, 1260 sorry, days of ministry of Christ, and 1260 years of uh, the Antichrist sort of dwell, ruling supremely. And then he has a death, resurrection, and ascension. And uh, we know that the Antichrist had the deadly wound, and we're sort of witnessing his. Uh, soon coming resurrection and ascension. And we've had numerous uh, structures uh, relating to date and, and span correlations. Um, I'll just show you one for an example. So this here um, is evidence for the fall of Babylon. 
it can be traced down to between the 12th and 13th of October, in the, in the sort of in the evening, in 539 BC. Uh, there was the discovery of the Nabonidus Chronicle in the mid 19th century, enabling the dating of the fall of Babylon to the 13th of October, 539 BC. It says in that document, in the month Tashritu, when Cyrus attacked the army of Akkad in Opus on the Tigris, the inhabitants of Akkad revolted, but he, Cyrus, massacred the inhabitants. The 15th day, being the 12th of October, Sippar uh, was seized without battle. Nabonidus fled the 16th day, October the 13th. Gobrias, the governor of Gatium, and the army of Cy Cyrus entered Babylon without battle. Afterward, Nabonidus was arrested in Babylon when he returned there. So we have, we have here a date with uh, chronological, archaeological evidence that can be pinned down to occurring. And then we have a statement here by Ellen White. She says, the reign of Darius was honored of God. Upon his death, within about two years of the fall of Babylon, Cyrus succeeded to the throne and the beginning of his reign marked the completion of the 70 years since the first company of Hebrews had been taken by Nebuchadnezzar from their Judean home to Babylon. So we had 539 being for the fall of Babylon, and here we have Ellen White saying, about two years after, after that, we have this year decree of Cyrus. So therefore we can count from 539, two years would take us to 537. And then counting back, the 70 years would have been gone then in 607. And we have these here 70 years being mentioned in Jeremiah 29, verse 10. It says, Thus saith the Lord, that after 70 years be accomplished at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good word towards you in causing you to return to this place. So we have that 70-year period as a span. We also have 70 AD as a date. Ellen White says, after the settlement of the Hebrews in Canaan, the tabernacle was replaced by the Temple of Solomon, which, though a permanent structure and upon a larger scale, observed the, time, the same proportions and was similarly furnished. In this form, the sanctuary existed, except while it lay in ruin in Daniel's time until its destruction by the Romans in 70 AD. So I have laid out there them 70 years as a span and then 70, 70 AD as a date. I'll just sort of, uh, I'll just do it on the, the board. So I'm to the camera. Can you get to the... Sorry. You have to switch to the cameras on here. How do you do that? Oh, it is? It is. Okay. okay. Just not on there. Okay. Yeah. okay. So we have 70 AD as a date. And then we have 70 years as a span. And we see that these begin in 537, two years after the fall of Babylon. And they go to 607. Now the end of the 70 weeks occurred in 34 AD. And from this year time period, you had a period of 490 years that we get from Daniel chapter 9, verses 24 to 27, 70 week prophecy. And so this period between 34 AD to 70 is 36 years. And we can connect this here prophecy also to the 2,300 years, which ends on the 10th day 
of the seventh month. So we could also connect that 10th day of the seventh month to also AD 34 and the stoning of Stephen. And so we can assume also that it began on the 10th day of the seventh month. Uh, we have that midway date that when uh, Ezra arrives in Babylon on the fifth day, the first month. And then the next date that we have significant after that is the 20th day of the ninth month when there's a, a separation of strange wives. So the mid midpoint of that there would be the 10th day of the seventh month for the decree going into effect. If we go to 537 AD, or sorry, BC, and we count similarly, similar uh, 36 years. It takes us to the year 573 BC. And we find this here date in Ezekiel chapter 40, verse 1. And it mentions uh, the 10th day, the beginning of the year. And the, the understanding of that there relates to the seventh month. So we have that 36 years connected to the 10th day of the seventh month in each case. And then we understood that this is connected to a jubilee, so you would have a period of 49 years, which parallels these here 490 from, from these, this point. And these would take us to 622. And uh, the autumn, on the 10th day of the seventh month, then, will be, Ezekiel is going to count a, a jubilee cycle. And this is the year previous to this, you had the Passover in the spring. And this is recorded in uh, 2 Kings, around chapter 23, I think. Down there, you have the Passover of Josiah. And um, there's a. Um, so we have here then the remainder of the, after these 36 years to 573 BC, we have a period of 34 years. So we have 34 years as a span until this year date that we find in Ezekiel. And then we have 34 years as a date. We've uh, 70 years as a span, 70 years as a date. And we will also have 607 years, uh, sorry, 607 as, a, as a, a date. But we also have it as a span and um, trying to remember where it goes. <laughs> I think it goes to, uh, I think it's from 573, maybe, to, mm -hmm. to 34. Yeah, yeah, those together. So I think it's 607 years uh, inclusive count. Yeah. So because we go from the AD, BC. So I think with this year's structure, uh, just God's confirming a chronology that this is the correct date for Ezekiel 40 verse 1. Um, the correct date, well, well El Mike confirms this, that's established, that's established, and uh, I, think, I think it just establishes so much of the chronology just seems to, to fit. Uh, I'll just uh, share. So that's that uh, diagram. Um, so you have there, also as I didn't mention there, with the, you have the year of Josiah's Passover at one end, and then with the destruction of Jerusalem. 
that siege begins just at the time of the Passover. So they had gathered themselves in Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover when the, that siege uh, took place. So just some statements uh, concerning uh, chronology. So we've seen that how important that chronology was in the time of the Millerite. Ellen White expounds that when she says the angel who unites in the proclamation of the third angel's message is to lighten the whole earth with his glory. A work of worldwide extent and unwanted power is here foretold. The advent movement of 1840 to 1844 was a glorious manifestation of the power of God. The first angel's message was carried to every mission station in the world and in some countries there was the greatest extent of religious interest which had been witnessed in any land since the Reformation in the 16th century. But these are to be far exceeded by the mighty movement under the last warning of the third angel. The work will be similar to that uh, of the day of Pentecost, as the former reign was given in the outpouring of the Holy Spirit at the opening of the gospel to cause the upright upspringing of the precious seed, so the latter reign will be given at its close for the ripening of the harvest. So if this here chronology, in a sense, was a large part of the Millerite movement, um, it's reasonable to expect chronology is going to have a large part uh, at the end with uh, the, the, the latter end as well. And the uh, chronology was also important in the time period of Christ, which is, she refers to as the former reign. So quoting Mark chapter 1, verses 14, um, says, Jesus came into Galilee, Galilee, preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God, and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye, and believe the gospel. So there is no understanding that the time is fulfilled. That connects that to the prophecy of Daniel. And chapter seven, chapter nine, in the seventy weeks. So the Messiah's coming had been first announced in Judea, in the temple at Jerusalem. The birth of the forerunner had been foretold to Zacharias as he ministered before the altar. On the hills of Bethlehem, the angels had proclaimed the birth of Jesus. To Jerusalem, the Magi had come in search of him. In the temple, Simeon and Anna had testified of his divinity. Jerusalem and all Judea had listened to the preaching of John the Baptist and the, dis and the deputation from the Sanhedrin with the multitude. This deputation, okay. So had heard his testimony concerning Jesus. So in Judea, Christ had received his first disciples. Here much of his early ministry had been spent. The flashing forth of his divinity and the cleansing of the temple, his miracles of healing, and the lessons of divine truth that fell from his lips all proclaimed that they which all proclaimed that which after the healing at Bethesda he had declared before the Sanhedrin, his sonship to the eternal. If the leaders in Israel had received Christ, he would have been honoured that he would have honoured them as his messengers to carry the gospel to the world. To them was first given the opportunity to become heralds of the kingdom and, gra and the grace of God. But Israel knew not the time of her visitation. The jealousy and distrust of the Jewish leaders had ripened into open hatred, and the hearts of the people were turned away from Jesus. So, just um, emphasizing the chronology aspect uh, today is, in a sense, we can I could connect that to the miracles that Christ was doing, and a lot, lot of what we we have been witnessing in our chronological understanding. I think it's uh, just showing God's hand. To me, I, I think there's something uh, miraculous about it. And um, I have here some. Uh, concerning the, the 6,000 years of um, the concept that Christ will go to come, come back after 6,000 years of Earth's history. So Usher's specific choice of starting 
uh, the, the starting year may have been influenced by the then widely held belief that the Earth's potential duration was 6,000 years, 4,000 from the birth of Christ and 2,000 after, corresponding to the six days of creation, on the grounds that one day is with the Lord, a thousand years, a thousand years as one day. So we understand that, that these here 6,000 years concept was used by Miller in his chronology. Um, so I have a section there. I'm just thinking time-wise, you want to stop now? Um, well, you still got uh, right. Yeah, you still got minutes. You can go a little bit over, just to go like 20 minutes. Ahead. Okay, yes. So, Miller, he um, increased Usher's period of to the creation by 153 years to get to 1844. And part of that understanding that he had was he was concerning the book of Judges, which is part of what we're going to be looking at, uh, sort of the focus of my studies. So it is said, this is William Miller writing, by our chronological writers that the world was 4,000 years old uh, at our era for the birth of Christ. Oh, sorry, that the world was 4,004 years old at our era for the birth of Christ, but I think they are not right for more than 150 years, and I think I can prove. And I, but sorry, but I think that, but I think they are not right into more than 150 years, and I think I can prove by the Bible they are not. In the in the one article of chronology, for the time of the judges' rule, from Joshua to Samuel or to the death of Eli, or chronologers have given but about 295 years, when the Bible, in the history of the judges, gives us 440 year, 448 years. Paul in Acts 13 verse 20 gives us about the space of 100, 450 years. Um, Josephus, the Jewish historian, gives us four judges 451 years. Now I ask, in all human probability, who is right? Or late writers who give only who only give 295 years, or the history of the judges which gives 448 years, corroborated by Paul and Josephus' testimony? Surely all must agree that the weight of the testimony is in favour of that chronology which makes the year of Christ's birth, according to our comp computation, 4,157 years after the creation or fall of man. Then by adding 1843, we have or 6,000 years up to the commencing of the day of rest or the beginning of the 7,000th of the year or the great Sabbath, of which our seventh year is but a shadow. What strong evidence is this that we are now living at the end of the 6,000 years in which the work of redemption must be completed and the glory of God be revealed in the face of Jesus Christ at his appearing and his kingdom. And uh, Samuel Snow also agreed with Miller and his teaching. Uh, he just mentions there more specifically that Usher, just going down a wee bit, says that Usher had lost in the time of the judges 153 years. And then he goes so much over what uh, Miller said. So if we look at William Miller's chronology, he, that we have uh, creation there, and uh, we have the 1656 years, which he agrees with Usher, until the flood. And then he had 408 years, 400, sorry, 428 years to the the exode. Now Miller is calling Abraham's departure from Haran by this name. So the exode in 1828 dictionary relates to the concluding part of a play. So I'm not too sure why he's calling it an exode, but um, maybe it's sort of connected to, de to a departure. 
So he has there 470, year, 470 years to the injury into Canaan. This is the combination of the 430 years that we find in Genesis chapter 15, plus the 40 years wandering in the wilderness. And then he has 473, 473, 473 years to Samuel. And my understanding is that uh, this includes uh, Joshua as well. And he gives the, the, chrono the chronology of the judges later on. We can look at one of his quotes. And he, um, he gives a, sh a shorter period for this here. I think he gives 448 years. I think we read that. So I think he's taking, he calcul he's calculating 25 years then for the time period of Joshua until the period of the judges. And then from Samuel, it's 108 years to the foundation of the temple. So we have 84 years of the kings within that year time. We have the fourth year of Solomon. So we have four years there and then 40 years of David and then 40 years of Saul, so that would be 84 years. So he's maybe only given like 24 years for Samuel. And then Manasseh is taken captive uh, from that the foundation of the temple. It's 345 years. Uh, I would have a, a bit less, in my understanding it would be 336. And then we have what is correct from 677 to 607, 70 years. And then from Daniel's captivity to the decree of Artic Xerxes, 150 years. I believe that's correct as well. And then the 490 years, well, he takes it to Jesus being crucified rather um, than to, to when Stephen was stoned in 34. It has there 34 BC. I think I've, I've meant to write the AD there. So that's a, a typo. I have to correct. So that would be uh, 30, 33 um, <laughs> AD there. So, so that's uh, just my first presentation. Any thoughts, questions? If not, we'll just close with prayer. Okay, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father. We give thanks for your, your love and mercy towards us. We ask you help us in our infirmities and our weaknesses. We ask uh, the, your ability to empower us, be upon us, enable us to, to share these ways, these here lessons, this here chronology, Father, in a, a manner which is more clear and understanding to those listening. And we ask that those be blessed uh, who partake in these here studies. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen.